Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, a lot of people I talk to who are putting together second-hand PCs and want to choose Intel uh, as their CPU manufacturer of choice, well, they often find themselves going with an older Sandy Bridge chip, those on a tighter budget anyway, and to be honest, I can see exactly why. I mean, the Sandy Bridge chips, for example, the i5 2500K and 2600K i7, were great choices back in 2011, especially for gaming purposes. Now, if you wanted to also do a little bit of video editing, then the i7 would have been a better choice back in the day. But for pure gaming, many people went with the i5, and of course, both of these chips were overclockable as well. Today, I wanted to compare the 2500K to the 2600K in some gaming tests to see how each of them hold up. Now, this is going to be quite a brief video because I think we've tested the 2500K before. We've put together a 2500K system probably a couple of times and I've probably spoken about Sandy Bridge chips quite a lot on this channel um, because yes, I am quite the fan. So uh, we're gonna compare these two chips in a few titles and see which one comes out on top. Can the hyper-threading of the i7 really help it pull ahead in 2020? Well, let's get into it and find out. So I'm going to be throwing the 2500K gameplay up because that's uh, the chip that's probably going to struggle a little bit more. So it's sort of a worst case scenario on screen footage sort of thing, but I'll be putting up the comparative figures as well over some gameplay just so you can see the differences and then we'll be talking about those differences as well. So let's talk about some of these results. Now by popular demand Rainbow Six Siege has made its way back onto the benchmark roster. Here with the uh, i5 2500K we were seeing 247 on average and to be honest the i7 2600K didn't really do that much better. It's not really that CPU intensive so to be expected here the results didn't really differ although the 1% low with the i7 was slightly higher so that may be important when it comes to those fast paced action scenarios. In Assassin's Creed Origins, now I installed this because I thought it was the latest one and then I realised I think Odyssey was later so I installed this and then thought oh well I might as well benchmark it anyway so uh, it's quite a CPU intensive game nonetheless so it should highlight some differences here and with the i5 we saw 54 FPS on average with a 1% low of 32 and with the i7 we saw 64 frames per second so again if 60 FPS PS for you is that line that you would consider playable, then the i7 pushes us just above it, but the i5 falls slightly short. Shadow of the Tomb Raider at the highest settings here, 50 frames per second with the i5, again a pretty CPU intensive game, and 62 with the i7, so there was a nice bit of difference here, not only with the average, but with the 1% uh, low frame rate as well. GTA 5 then, with the very high settings, I decided to turn everything way up here, including the advanced options. Uh, we saw 69 FPS with the 2500K and 67 with the 2600K and there was no real difference here. I'd say that was quite negligible to be honest and even the 1% lows were quite negligible as well. The i7 2600K did do slightly better in terms of any frame drops but it was so similar that I'd call this an equal experience to be honest when using a 1080 Ti. Finally Red Dead Redemption 2, of course this game does enjoy more cores and more threads so it can make use of the 8 threads that the 2600K possesses and as such it will guarantee you a higher 1% low figure as well. So yeah, if you plan on playing Red Dead Redemption 2 and you uh, have seen one of these on the used market, then the 2600K would be the one to go for. Now of course this may be... Um, changed with overclocking both of these chips can of course be overclocked so in a different video i might push both of them to their limits and uh see what they can do then but as for now well i think it was obvious but the 2600k thanks to its hyper threading in 2020 does pull ahead in some cpu intensive titles there we are the 2500k and the 2600k are still pretty decent cpus in 2020 although you are going to see the 2600k pulling ahead in those cpu intensive titles which makes this one the chip to go for if you have a more unlimited budget. If you are on a slightly tighter budget, then the 2500K is still usable, of course it is, and uh, 
it will benefit from overclocking too. Both of these will. You know, I was unsure about the 2500K going into Red Dead Redemption 2, but if you remember, we tested the first i5, I think it was the 750 a while back and found that it did quite well. So four cores and four threads will still do okay, even with really old CPUs like that. But in those busier town areas, you may see the CPU usage hit 100%, and that is the uh, 2500K's downfall, to be honest, in those CPU intensive titles. The 2600K, thanks to its eight threads, is still pretty usable as well, more so, and I think it can be found at a pretty decent price now, but uh, of course, don't overpay for it. If it's more expensive than a Ryzen 3 3100, then yeah, the 3100 in that case would be the one to go for, but I think it's been interesting to see how these old, very popular or once popular chips do perform in 2020. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like on it down below, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.